What's up everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, and this video is brought to you by Big John's Scented Testicular Girdles. If your junk's big enough to need its own trunk or has issues with funk, try Big John's Scented Testicular Girdles, now in Cinnabon, McMuffin, and Calcutta bus scents. Big John's, a name you can trust to protect what you thrust. You know what? All fake sponsors aside, you guys know why you're here. It's for another unsponsored, no bullcrap review. And today's title is a game that tries so hard to channel elements of Zelda that there is a really good chance YouTube's spectacular AI is going to assign automatic copyright strikes to it. And that game is Yonder. And when it comes down to it, basically Yonder's an exploration, walking, running, crafting, animal farming simulator with no battle, unless you consider heated fishing contests some kind of Aqua UFC championship. Let's see how it did, shall we? Yonder is out on the 18th for PS4 and PC for prices between $19.99 and $29.99, depending on which version and where you get it. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Yonder, Pokemon that aren't protagonists with amazing lungs and bad first day luck. Graphics start first. If there is anything Yonder is, it's actually downright beautiful. That is, of course, if you would consider excellent stylistic color usage, huge vistas, and a rock-solid frame rate on older systems or the console, and a spectacular overall world design as good things. If you don't, you're going to hate it, but that'd be just a little bit weird. Yonder focuses on a sense of wonder from the moment you find yourself on the good ship barely lasts to the ending when you can finally return to your animal farm after your last quest. Also, the spectacular use of light is just jaw-dropping at times, and to say that the game uses it both as a tangible guidebook to future locations with some excellent mapping and overall guidestone features, or just as a tertiary way of delivering info to the player that this place is good, this place is bad, and this place probably smells like a bathhouse after the football team's winning Friday night pork barbecue meal, it is all done really, really well. Now, the main world is split into a series of regions, and while not exactly different from any other title like this, you do get the frozen swamp, grassland, and desert locations you would expect in a game like this, as you traipse from location to location, fulfilling the needs of hilariously bobble-headed NPCs that inhabit the regions, unlocking shortcuts from place to place, and picking up every goddamn thing not nailed down. But as my dad said on the day I was born, it's okay, good looks would have only got him so far, and the same can actually be said here with Yonder, because there are a couple problems. First, the game's control and how it overall interacts with some of the locations can be a bit hit or miss, especially when it comes to some ledges or tree trunks or other items you need to traverse and always feels a bit more difficult than it actually should be. You know what though, all that being said is a complete overall package from the comically overwrought design of the animals to the I have to get here as quick as possible main character when he gets moving in his animations, the game pretty much from start to finish delivers. And while at no time could you really say this is high polygon, it certainly is high production. Sound, music, and voice. <laughs> and of course, when it comes to audio categories, sounds up first. You sort of know what to expect when the very first real location is a cave complex and the directional pattern of sound shows excellent placement and processing to really make you feel like you're underground. And what's amazing is as this fades perfectly away as you explore further and that first moment you walk out into the land and the sound just opens up, it's actually pretty breathtaking. Environmentally, the game really sings as well with wind whipping across the grasslands and that high frequency crackle and sparkle that I think every gamer pretty much expects in Icelands, like the entire world is just a frozen pond ready to shatter under your pudgy ass player. I love that and I think it's really well done. Music. So this, I admit, surprised me a bit. I wasn't sure if they were going to go with the big orchestra feel of many RPGs or a more subtle affair, letting the soundscape take over, where big musical pieces usually friggin' thunder around, making it impossible to hear what's happening. And it's pretty much actually right in the middle, though for me, a couple tracks had some gratingly abrupt piano work, especially from time to time as I kept playing, and it really felt unfitting. Overall, the music does fit the grandeur of the locations, and since there are no enemies per se in the game at all, 
in the end, I think that's important. And while a couple bits did bother me, as I said before, the game at times shows a masterful understanding of fading out the music from time to time in relation to activity, day-night cycle possibly, and discovering new locations, and I really like that. Altogether, I'd say it's good, but it has a couple rough points. And of course, that brings us to voice, and yeah, it's pretty much the recording of a Brazzers couch with grunts and groans and ahs and oohs that open up a dialogue box for heavy reading. Now, as you guys know, I'm not actually really a fan of that kind of thing, and in a game like this, hinging on the elements of removal of a traditional pillar of gameplay, in this category, risk of death, I would have liked to have seen a bit more voice to flesh out the world and the environment. Now, I know that's expensive, but it can also work to elevate the atmosphere of locations, which, as I will describe later, might have actually helped some elements here. I would say, ultimately, pretty disappointing. And that, of course, brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. Now, your parents sent you away on a boat to the land of Gamia or Gamaya or whatever, and it's up to you from there to rescue the land from the Merc. Think the little brother, the nothing, and the never-ending story, and you pretty much know what I'm talking about. Now, the Merc basically locks off locations as you explore, and you find sprites, which are little Pokemon-style creatures that can be used to unlock the Merc and gain access to the new locations. Really, what Yonder offers is a mix of new location exploration with various crafting and activity systems, as well as needing to collect more sprites as sort of the backbone of the title. And really make no mistake, Yonder has a great world to explore and its consistent movement forward and well-worn way of traveling from large region to large region, unlocking early mid game. It's actually a bit less, oh God, I need to go back and see if this one section's worth unlocking because I have some sprites and more, oh well, I'm here already. I might as well try again. The intelligent design of putting the player's home at the starting space and making things like raising animals worth a little bit of money works well to get you to go back as well. So as you progress, you can join guilds, many of them having crafting items that you can go up in levels if you do so. And in those guilds, some of them start out with giving out quests. And there are also some activities on the farm and so forth. And as I stated before, there's some stuff like fishing competitions. And I have to state clearly that while many quests were very, very rote, there are a couple that actually surprised me with the deftness of the handling, like being able to choose which side to support in the world's first woodworking battle event. Now, many times when you get a game like this that removes the sometimes expected pillar of gameplay, and again, in this case, risk of life and limb, when you're done with the main story, you can look back and see how well it all came together and if the other elements held it up, if you haven't already noticed as you played. And yes, there is an almost masterful interplay of reasons to travel back and forth in the land, all the way up to that last moment of the game. But in my opinion, the lack of combat, the lack of any risk, absolutely hurts this title because it is combined with something else that I was surprised about, the lack of any puzzle work or true interaction with the game world. I mean, sure, the exploration is amazing here and crafting is, if not deep, at least lengthy in its requirements for raising your ranks in the game. But strangely enough, it's these activities and some others and the way they're styled that do more to focus on the fact that there's a lack of any risk than keep you busy thinking about other things. Fishing, yeah, it's enjoyable, but it's incredibly easy. Crafting is really nothing more than a treadmill of item gathering that starts out somewhat benign, seeps into an almost comforting feel as you run around and feel like you're grabbing things. And then once you realize just how shallow it really is, it plunges you into depression because you realize that a race where everyone's the winner isn't a friggin' race, it's a location-specific gathering of those who are dumb enough to join. Now, we get this in some walking simulators, but those are backed up by puzzles or deep story integration and mystery to keep it going. And Yonder really doesn't have that. It has some puzzling moments, but those usually revolve around trying to figure out how to get eight sprites when you only have six and you want to clear some Merc from around a chest. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I could go down to 7-Eleven slow week-long cooker and grab a hot dog and call it gourmet, but after eating it and getting out of the hospital, we'd all know that wasn't correct. And that's pretty much what happens here. Something is missing and you notice it. Yonder has a great deal to do, but its laid-back style and almost mobile-like gameplay and lack of risk meant that it needed something else. And that's not, for me at least, the treadmill of crafting my 43rd red firework cannon, but instead needs to be interaction with the game world like puzzles, mystery, deep story, and so forth to dive deeper into the title. Also, after crafting about my 700th bag of reeds, I started to wonder why no one else in the game world had friggin been taught how to mow the lawn. Now, I know for a lot of people, they're going to jump into this game and they're going to be totally fine with this kind of exploration, and it is certainly a strong point to the title. I just expected far more to keep me interested and keep me from really noticing the lack of any kind of true risk versus reward. Fun factor. You know, at the start, yep, middle, pretty good, but after that, no. For me, this is a definition of not a nefariously planned front-loading of a title, but one that might seem surprisingly so if you spend time with it. 
Yes, at times, Yonder is actually fun, and I applaud the devs for a spectacularly built world and all the little secrets that you can sometimes find. It's also one that I felt I never actually really interacted that much with. And sadly, with only about six to seven hours of main story, and that's not voiced, it's not actually that engaging at all, which is really surprising, and much of it is wrapped up in very shallow world interaction, the game just didn't hit it off for me, even with the promise of tens of hundreds of hours of picking up rocks, which for some reason the devs in multiple places have said is really fun to do in this game, but all I found was that it was just picking up rocks. Now, as you guys know, sometimes I can like these kind of games. It really does matter if they elevate in those places to make you forget what's missing or what they purposely removed. And unfortunately, much of Yonder I spent noticing things were gone. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. On the PC, rent is, of course, a deep, deep sale. And this is actually a wait. It is only $19.99 in some places, $29 in others, which is a good price. And while the main quest is, like I said, less than eight hours, there's crafting and building and raising freakishly large-shouldered cows, which could take you longer. But for me personally, something about Yonder never really made me want to come back to do those things. And in some ways, it feels like their design and forward movement exploration and the loads of things to do don't negate the need for some kind of risk where other games have navigated that correctly and there's just something missing here. Somewhere along the voyage, Yonder hit some rocks for me. So anyway, that's it for me. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Twitter, Patreon, the Amazon affiliate links. Uh, and remember, I'm on iTunes and podcast for the podcasts we do weekly. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.